Hey Creative Crowd, how are you doing? Today I have five awesome tips and tricks for you that you should know about Affinity Photo. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Let's get started with the first trick. This is about the visibility of masks in Affinity Photo. So I will select my layer and create a mask. So let's select the tonal range midtones for example and when you go down here to mask click of course this will create a mask for you from the selection Control d on your keyboard to deselect and the trick now is when you hold your alt key or option key on the keyboard and click you can see that it will show you the actual content of the mask and this is really handy if you want to know what is going on inside of your mask and if you want to see the picture again just again hold the alt key click on your image and there is your image again and of course you can turn off and on the mask as always so the next trick i want to show you really awesome is that you can actually use kind of smart layers in affinity photo and the way you do this is by creating a new affinity photo file so let's do this real quick and I will simply create a bunch of shapes here. Uh, let's call this pink, for example, and make a bunch of copies of that. And then we will also create a text. Hello, there we go. And maybe recolor the text. And let's save this now as an affinity photo file. You can put in here whatever you want. It doesn't matter. It's just a demo right now. So let's save this. I will just call it smart demo, but you can call it whatever you want. Close this file. And the cool thing now is with the original Affinity Photo file, I can go to File and Place and select my Affinity Photo file. You can also do this with Affinity Designer files and place this in here. And you can move it around as you see, you can resize it, there's no problem with that at all. And the cool thing is, if you now double click on it, this will open a new window and you can see that the window says not the file name, but instead it says embedded. So this means that this is a virtual copy of your original file. So the original file will not be affected by any changes you're doing here. So I can, for example, just move around anything here you can of course add new content so let's rotate the text and then make a copy and change the color so you can do whatever you want and when you go back to the original file you will see that this has automatically updated the only um, downside of this maybe is that you can only change the elements inside of your smart layer while you are in this embedded view so you cannot see the background and the objects at the same time, but uh, you can go back and forth as often as you want. So uh, that is not a problem. And of course, the original file that you've created before with all these shapes inside will not be affected by that. And when you save your Affinity Photo file, as you can see here on the right side, the layer says embedded document. This will always stay in there. So you can come back at any later time and change these elements around. So this is super, super useful. A thing that you should look out though, and this is really a warning, is if you think that you could maybe bend this by perspective and it looks a little bit by it, so you click on the perspective tool and start to change things around, you will notice on the right side that now it says pixel instead of embedded document. So at this point, the embedded document is gone and you only have a pixel layer, so you can't change the contents anymore don't fall for that you should know that this is automatically automatically converted so let's cancel this and go to edit undo and there we have our embedded document again okay let's go on to our next trick and this was a question and i have from a comment about uh, the video that i did for our vector shape so let's draw a vector shape in here and when you zoom into it you will realize that your vector shape has pixels around it, which should not happen to a vector shape because it's made of curves. The reason for that is that Affinity Photo is displaying the canvas as pixels no matter what the object is that you're seeing, but this is actually 
a vector shape. And the way we can prove this is if you, for example, export it as a PDF. Let's export that real quick, call it test one. And then we open it in Affinity Designer. Let's open this. You will see that the vector shape has been preserved. Here it still says ellipse as the layer type. And when I zoom in here, because Affinity Designer is not based on pixels, but instead of the curves, you will see that you have a very smooth outer edge. This is especially important when you want to print something where shapes should be cut out of the print or you have some other kind of special treatment. Now, and here's the next trick that I want to show you that is really, really important to know and understand is when I use this vector shape as a mask for my pixel layer, you can right click on it and say mask to below. This is a vector mask. I can pull it off and you can see it's still a vector. It still says ellipse. So let's do this again, mask to below. And now if I do the very same export, as a PDF, we will call this test two. And we open it again in Affinity Designer. You will see that not only is this not a vector mask anymore, it isn't a mask at all. You can see on the right side, when you look at the layer, it says image and that image is made of pixels. And this is why you have this pixelated corner around it. So this is really important to know if you export something as a PDF with a vector mask, there is no more vector mask. It's going to be converted to pixels in the mask. Okay. So the last thing that I want to show you is um, to combine shapes. And this is a really cool thing that you can do. So let's take our ellipse again. And um, I will duplicate it by holding control and drag. So now I have two circles here. Uh, let's select both of them and move them a little bit more to the middle. And if you want to combine them or subtract them or change them in, in a certain way to have more complex shapes, you can actually do that in Affinity Photo and not just in Affinity Designer. The way you do that is you select both of these layers and then you go to Layer and Geometry. And here you have five different options. You have Add and Add will combine two shapes into one shape. You have Subtract. Let's do this real quick. Subtract will subtract the upper layer from the lower layer. In this case, you can see we end up with something that looks a little bit like Pac-Man. Let's go back and try the next option. The next option is intersect and intersect means that only the intersection of both shapes will be left over in this case. In this case, something that looks like, I don't know, like a, a seed. Uh, from a fruit. Okay, let's go back and try the next one. And this is a really cool one. It says divide and divide. If you look on the right side now for the layers will actually create three shapes, which are the divisions of the overlapping shapes. So the more you have overlaps, the more layers you will end up with, of course. And so you end up with, with all the possible, uh, divided shapes here from these overlaps is in this case, three, let's go back last time and go to layers where it says combine and you would think that combine and add is the same thing so this would mush everything into one shape but actually what happens is that you do end up with one shape but minus the overlaps so you have this hole in the middle now and end up with one shape and as you can see on the right side these new shapes are always curves in that case okay these are the tips and tricks for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode. Have a nice day. Bye.